Once upon a time, in a small peaceful village, there lived a young man named Chike. He was kind, hardworking, and well loved by everyone. Chike had a big heart and a successful business in the village market. One day, he met a beautiful young woman named Olako. She worked as a sales representative at an electronic shop in the same market. Olako was gentle, caring, and always had a smile on her face. Chike and Olako quickly became friends, and soon their friendship blossomed into love. They enjoyed each other's company and spent many days together. They walked through the fields, talked under the stars, and laughed a lot. Their love was so deep and true that nothing seemed capable of separating them. After a year of dating, Chike decided to ask Olaku to marry him. Olaku was overjoyed and said yes immediately. They both knew that they wanted to spend the rest of their lives together. Chike wanted to share the happy news with his mother, so he took Olaku to meet her. Chike's mother, however, did not approve of his choice. She believed that Olaku was not a suitable match for her son. She is from a poor home, she said. No one knows them in this village. She is practically the one taking care of her family. If you marry her, the responsibility will be shifted to you. But Chike's mind was made up. Mama, Ulaku is the woman for me. Please let me worry about everything else, he said gently. His mother eventually gave up trying to change his mind. She did not want to lose her son's affection. But she quietly promised herself that she would deal with Ulako after the marriage. A date was chosen for the wedding, and Chike and Ulako were filled with joy. They invited the entire village to their wedding celebration. It was a grand event with music, dancing, and lots of delicious food. Everyone celebrated their union, and it was a day filled with happiness and love. After the party, Chike and Olako returned to start their life together as husband and wife. They were very happy and everything seemed perfect. After about two weeks of their honeymoon, Olako approached her husband with a request. Dim, meaning my husband, I would like to go back to my job at the electronic shop. She said, I enjoy working and it helps me feel useful. But Chike was not happy with this idea. Never. My wife can never slave for anyone, he replied. Ulaku pleaded with him, but Chike insisted that she quit her job. He promised to set up a business for her so she should work on her own terms. Ulaku reluctantly agreed for the sake of marital peace. She used her savings to help her mother start a small provision store, ensuring her family survival without burdening her husband. Their marriage continued to be harmonious, and soon, Ulako became pregnant. Chike was overjoyed and pampered her with love and care. Despite his growing discomfort with her changing body and her new eating habits, he concluded that it was all because of the baby. Chike provided every assistance his wife needed, making sure she was always comfortable and happy. However, Chike's mother was not pleased with all the attention he was giving Ulaku. She felt jealous and worried that Ulaku would take her son away from her. One evening, she said, You are pampering her too much, Chike. Don't spoil her. Mama, if I don't pamper her, who will? Chike replied, smiling. He wanted to make sure that Ulaku was happy and well taken care of, especially during her pregnancy. Despite his mother's disapproval, Chike continued to shower Olako with love and care. He knew that his wife's happiness was important for their growing family. Chike believed that a happy wife would make a happy home. Chike and Olako's bond grew stronger with each passing day, and they looked forward to welcoming their new baby into their loving home. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months. Ulaku's belly grew larger 
as she got closer to her due date. Chike was excited to become a father and took extra care of Olako. One night, Olako felt a sharp pain and knew it was time for the baby to come. Chike, the baby is coming, Olako cried out in pain. Chike quickly helped her to the midwife's house. The night was long and hard. Olako was in a lot of pain and Chike stayed by her side, holding her hand. The midwife worked hard to help Olako deliver the baby. After what felt like forever, the baby finally came out. But something was wrong. The baby was not crying. The midwife checked the baby and shook her head sadly. The baby had passed away. Olako was already very weak and fainted when she heard the news. Chike was heartbroken. He had been looking forward to becoming a father. When Olako woke up, she cried uncontrollably. Chike tried to comfort her, but he was also very sad. The death of their child hurt him deeply. He started to feel angry and blamed Olako for their baby's death. It was your overeating that suffocated my daughter, he shouted one day, his voice full of anger and pain. This tragedy changed Chike. His love for Olako turned into anger and contempt. He started to treat her badly, shouting at her and sometimes hitting her. His mother didn't help matters either. Didn't I tell you? When you were pampering her and spoiling her, she became lazy. She couldn't even push a baby out. His mother said one day when Chike was abusing Olako. Olako would always cry her eyes out. She was very sad and couldn't believe how much her life had changed. Chike's mother had never approved of their marriage and now used every opportunity to make Olako's life miserable. Olako often wondered if this was the same man she fell in love with and married. Chike was hardly ever at home these days. Sometimes he returned home drunk. When he was drunk, he became even more abusive. Olako became a punching bag. She would cry herself to sleep, feeling lonely and afraid. Olako kept silent about her suffering. She didn't want to open up to anyone because she couldn't bear the shame of going back to her father's house to join her poor mother. Although her mother was never in support of her marriage at first because she had heard all the things Chike's mother was saying in the village about them. Olako had insisted. Her mother couldn't stop her. Many times, Olako's mother would visit her and ask if she was okay. Olako would always say everything was fine, feigning a smile. Olako's mother brought herbs for her to heal quickly. Please take these herbs regularly so you can heal first and conceive again, she said on one of her visits. Thank you, Mama. Olako replied, forcing a smile. One day, Olako's mother came visiting again. Chike's mother insulted her. Beggar, have you come to beg for food again? Since my son married into your miserable family, you people will not let him rest. Chike's mother abused. Olako's mother was shocked that such words could come from an elderly woman. After seeing her daughter, she left heartbroken. Olako cried but continued living as if nothing was happening. However, things got worse. Chike started body shaming her, calling her fat and accusing her of only being interested in eating and getting fat. He told her that her womb couldn't hold a child. Sometimes, he would sit and nag, telling her how poor her family was. He said that if her parents weren't poor, they wouldn't have let her marry at such an early age. He accused her of marrying him for his money. Whenever she tried to talk, he would shut her up with a smile. He later told her that he only married her because his family members were pressuring him to get married and that he was not ready and never loved her. Many nights, Ulako sat awake, crying and praying. She felt so alone and helpless. Despite everything, Olako didn't want to leave Chike. She couldn't bear the thought of going back to her father's house 
and adding more problems to her mother's life. After some months, Ulako became pregnant again. She told Shike the news. He received it with mixed emotions, but he slowed down in maltreating her. He also reduced her eating habits and laid down some strict rules. Ulako tried as much as possible to keep the rules. Despite his harshness, Ulako hoped that this pregnancy would bring some joy back into their lives. She took care of herself, followed the rules Chike had set, and prayed for a healthy baby. Chike's mother continued to be mean to her, but Ulako tried to ignore it and focus on her baby. Each day, Ulako silently hoped for a change. She wanted to see the loving Chike she once knew. She wanted her husband to love her and their unborn child. She prayed for strength to endure and for happiness to return to their home. Ulako's pregnancy was progressing and she tried to stay positive despite everything. But when she reached her third month, something terrible happened. One day, she felt a sharp pain in her belly that was so unbearable she could hardly move. Panicking, she sent a neighbor's child to call Chike from his shop. When the child reached Chike's shop and told him about Ulako's condition, he nonchalantly said, tell her to go to the hospital. Before Ulako got to the clinic, she could barely walk. She felt something wet in her underwear. Struggling, she finally made it to the hospital. The nurses rushed her to the emergency room. The doctor examined her and shook his head. Ulak knew something was wrong. Still in pain, she asked, Doctor, hope my baby is okay. Her voice trembled, almost in tears. The doctor forced a smile and said, Yeah, but where is your husband? He's at the shop, Ulako answered. Just then, she let out a painful scream. The doctor immediately started working on her. He successfully carried out the procedure, but Ulako cried her eyes out. She had lost the baby again. Later that evening, Chike came to the village clinic to check on Ulako. When he received the news, he paid the bills and walked away without saying much. Ulako was not surprised. She stayed alone in the clinic, feeling more abandoned than ever. After three days, she was discharged. When Ulako got home, she was shocked to see her husband with another woman. She entered the room and then returned to ask her husband why he had abandoned her in the clinic. Dim, what did I do for you to forget me in the hospital like that? And here you are having fun with this strange woman. Ulako asked her voice filled with hurt and confusion. But Chike didn't let her finish before giving her a resounding slap. How dare you question me? You can't even give birth to children, but you have the guts to question me, he shouted angrily. Ulako felt a stinging pain on her cheek from the slap and an even deeper pain in her heart. She stood there, tears streaming down her face, feeling completely helpless. The strange woman which Chike just watched, seemingly amused by the situation. Ulako retreated to her room, her heart heavy with sorrow. She couldn't understand how Chike, the man she had once loved so deeply, could turn into someone so cruel. She lay on her bed, crying silently, praying for a miracle to change her situation. Despite everything, Ulako decided to stay strong. She knew she had to find a way to survive this nightmare. Each day was a struggle, but she held on to the hope that one day things would get better. She thought of her mother's words and the strength she had shown in difficult times. Days turned into weeks, and Ulako continued to endure Chike's abuse. She tried to avoid confrontations and did her best to follow the rules he had set for her. But the pain of losing her baby and the constant mistreatment from Chike and his mother weighed heavily on her heart. Ulako continued to lock herself inside the house, pretending to her mother that everything was fine. Two years had passed and she hadn't gotten pregnant again. She was scared and worried 
that Chiki might get another woman pregnant every night. She would pray to God to help her and see her through these tough times. Chike had reduced the amount of money he gave her for food. One day, Olako was very hungry. She even went to her mother-in-law for help. Mama, please can I have a little food? Chike didn't give me money for food. She pleaded. Look at this witch that's, that is eating her babies. Why are you hungry? Don't you have babies to eat? Chike's mother fired back at her. Hearing that, Olako turned around and went back to her house. She stayed indoors, yawning from hunger until evening when her husband returned. Dean, welcome. How was your day? Please, I am hungry. I haven't eaten all day, Olako said gently to her husband. What are you eating for? It's been five years now and you can't give me a child. All you do is sit and eat my food. Please get out of my way. Chike fired back harshly with a scornful look. Olako's heart sank. She had hoped for some kindness from Chike, but his words cut deep into her soul. She quietly stepped aside, tears welling up in her eyes. She felt so alone and helpless. Later that night, Olako sat in her room, crying silently. She thought about how different her life had become. Once she was happy and full of hope, now she was constantly scared and sad. She wondered if things would ever get better. Despite the harsh treatment, Olako still prayed every day. She prayed for a miracle, for a child, and for Chike to change. She didn't know how much longer she could endure this, but she kept holding on to her faith. Days turned into weeks. And Olako continued to suffer in silence. She rarely left the house, except to go to the market. She avoided Chike's mother and tried to stay out of trouble. But the constant hunger and sadness were taking a toll on her. One day, Olako's mother visited her again. As always, Olako pretended that everything was fine. She put on a fake smile and told her mother that she was okay. Are you sure you are all right, my daughter? Her mother asked, looking concerned. Yes, mama. I'm fine. Just a little tired. Ulako lied. Her mother wasn't convinced, but she didn't push further. She handed Ulako some food she had brought and left, praying for her daughter's well-being. Ulako was grateful for the food, but it wasn't enough to fill the emptiness in her heart. She continued to pray and hope for a change. She dreamed of a day when she would hold her own baby and when Chike would love her again. One evening, while Ulako was praying, Chike came home drunk. He stumbled into the house, shouting and cursing a sin. Ulako tried to calm him down, but he pushed her away. Stop pretending to care. You can't even give me a child. And you think you can tell me what to do? Chike yelled. Olako felt a sharp pain in her chest. She didn't know how much longer she could take this. But she kept silent, not wanting to provoke him further. The night was long and filled with tears for Olako. She prayed for strength to endure and for a miracle to change her situation. She hoped that one day things would get better and she would find happiness again. Chike and Olako's marriage had changed. Romance was a thing of the past. Now, whenever Chike wanted to go intimate with Olako, it was always by force. One night, he forced himself on her again. Olako felt hurt and helpless. She missed the love they once shared. The following month, Olako discovered she was pregnant. She was both happy and scared. She didn't know what fate had in store for her, so she kept the news to herself. She prayed that this time, things would be different and that the baby would be healthy. One night, Chike returned from the market. He was in a bad mood and didn't say much. After dinner, he tried to forcefully take advantage of Ulako again. She pleaded with him, tears in her eyes. Please, Chike, not this night. 
I am not feeling well, Olako begged. Chike ignored her and continued to force himself on her. Desperate, Olako screamed. I'm pregnant. Chike paused immediately. He looked at her with surprise and then hissed in annoyance. Without saying a word, he left her there and went to sleep in the sitting room that night. Olako felt a mix of relief and sadness. She hoped that the news of the baby would change things, but she wasn't sure. The next morning, Chike acted as if nothing had happened. He didn't mention the pregnancy and went about his usual routine. Olako didn't know what to expect. She wanted to believe that Chike would be happy about the baby, but his reaction made her uncertain. Days turned into weeks, and Olako continued to keep to herself. She took care of her health and prayed for the baby's safety. She tried to avoid any conflicts with Chike and his mother, who continued to treat her badly. One afternoon, Ulako's mother visited again. Ulako wanted to tell her mother about the pregnancy but was afraid. She didn't want to raise her mother's hopes only to disappoint her again if something went wrong. How are you, my daughter? Her mother asked, looking worried. I am fine, mama, Ulako replied, forcing a smile. Her mother looked at her closely. Are you sure? You don't look well. Ulako nodded, trying to hold back her tears. Yes, mama, just a little tired. Her mother sighed and handed her some food. Please take care of yourself, Ulako. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to tell me. Ulako nodded, grateful for her mother's love and support. She watched her mother leave and felt a pang of guilt for not sharing the news. But she wasn't ready to talk about it yet. One night, Chike came home late. He was drunk and stumbled into the house. Ulako tried to help him, but he pushed her away. Leave me alone, he shouted. You are just a burden to me. Ulako's heart sank. She went to her room and cried silently. She prayed for strength and for the safety of her baby. She hoped that one day things would get better and that Chike would change. As the weeks passed, Olako took extra care of herself. She ate healthy food and rested as much as she could. She avoided any stress and prayed constantly. She wanted to believe that this baby would bring happiness back into her life. Despite everything, Ulako kept her feet. She knew she had to stay strong for the baby. She hoped that one day, Chike would see the love and strength she had and that their lives would change for the better. Ulako's life continued to be full of pain and sorrow. She had hoped her pregnancy would bring some joy. But as usual, at two months, she miscarried again. This time, it wasn't as bad as the previous ones. But it still broke her heart. She cried uncontrollably as the midwife cleaned her up. After the midwife finished, Olak couldn't go home right away. She was scared of what she would face at home. But she knew she had to go back. So she summoned all her courage and went home. As soon as she entered the house, her mother-in-law started taunting her. Witch, have you eaten another one? To fear kwa. Amusu, she cursed to Lako, calling her a witch in their language. Ulako felt a fresh wave of pain from the cruel words. She tried to ignore her mother-in-law and went into her room. But the torment didn't stop there. Chike came home later and released his own poison. So you have sworn you will not give me a child. Get ready. Your days are numbered in this house. I will bring someone who can give me what you can't. He shouted at her and then left the house. Ulako was left alone in her misery. She cried until she had no more tears left. She felt completely alone and hopeless. She didn't know what to do or where to turn. The people who were supposed to love and support her were the ones hurting her the most. The next day, Olako's mother visited. She saw her daughter's swollen eyes and knew something was wrong. Olako, my daughter, 
What has happened? She asked gently. Mama, I lost the baby again. Olako whispered, her voice full of sorrow. Oh, my child, her mother said, hugging her tightly. I am so sorry, but you must be strong. I don't know how much more I can take, Mama. Olako cried. Chike and his mother hate me. They blame me for everything. Her mother looked at her with tears in her own eyes. You are a strong woman, Olako. Do not let them break you. Keep praying and stay strong for yourself. Olako nodded, trying to find some strength in her mother's words. She knew she had to keep going, even though it was hard. She promised herself that she would not let Shike and his mother destroy her spirit. Days turned into weeks, and Olako continued to endure the taunts and abuse. She prayed every day for strength and for a miracle. She hoped that one day, things would change. One evening, as Olako was preparing dinner, Chike came home with another woman. He introduced her as his new wife. Olako felt her heart shatter into pieces. She stood there, unable to say a word. This is Amara. She will stay here with us from now on, Chike said coldly. Olako couldn't believe what she was hearing. She felt betrayed and humiliated, but she didn't have the strength to fight. She went to her room and cried herself to sleep. The next morning, Olako woke up with a heavy heart. She knew her life had changed forever. She had to find a way to survive in this new reality. She prayed for strength and guidance. As the days went by, Olako continued to do her best. She took care of the house and stayed out of the way as much as possible. She avoided any confrontation with Shike and his new wife. One afternoon, Ulako's mother visited again. She saw the new woman in the house and understood what had happened. Ulako, my daughter, you must be strong. Her mother said, remember that you are not alone. God is with you and I am always here for you. Ulako nodded. Feeling a glimmer of hope in her mother's words, she knew she had to keep going no matter how difficult it was. She prayed for the strength to face each day and for a better future. When Ulako's mother got home, she was worried sick for her daughter. She never ceased praying for God's intervention. Ulo, my daughter, has suffered a lot in this life. She deserves better than what she is seeing. She thought to herself. Meanwhile, the girl Chike brought home, Amara, was treated like a queen by his mother. Chike's mother would cook food and give it to Amara to take to Chike at his shop. She had instructed Amara to try win Chike's heart. One day, Chike made out with Amara. A month later, Amara came to Chike's mother to lie that she was pregnant for Chike. His mother was so excited. That which Ulako will finally leave my son. She said with glee. But Ulako didn't leave the house when she saw the girl. She tried all she could to avoid Amara. But Amara would deliberately trouble her. She turned Ulako into her maid. All in the name of being pregnant. Ulako endured all her torture. One day, Amara slapped Ulako because the food was not prepared on time. Ulako didn't retaliate. She waited for her husband to return. Dim, Amara slapped me today, simply because the food was delayed a bit. Please tell me, am I Amara's maid in this house? Ulako complained to Chike. Will you shut up? Why would you delay her food? Don't you know she's carrying my child? Do you want to kill her child? Chike replied harshly. With tears in her eyes, Ulako went inside and packed her things. She couldn't take it anymore. As she was leaving, Amara teased her. Please make sure you don't return, Amara taunted. Ulako left the house, her heart heavy with sorrow. She walked slowly to her mother's house, feeling every bit of the pain from her husband's betrayal and the cruelty she had endured. When she reached her mother's house, she broke down in tears. Mama, I can't take it anymore. Chike has changed. He doesn't love me. He brought another woman into our house 
and she treats me like a slave. Ulako cried. Her mother held her tightly. My daughter, you have suffered so much, but you are strong. We will get through this together. You are not alone, she said, comforting Ulako. Days passed, and Ulako tried to find some peace. She helped her mother with chores and tried to distract herself from her pain. She prayed for strength and hoped that one day things would get better. Back at Chike's house, Amara continued to pretend she was pregnant. She enjoyed the attention and care from Chike and his mother. But as weeks turned into months, it became clear that there was no baby. One morning, Chike's mother confronted Amara. Amara, it's been months now. Where is the baby? She asked suspiciously. Amara tried to lie again, but it was obvious. I, I don't know. Maybe there was a mistake. She stammered. Chike's mother was furious. You lied to us. You are not pregnant. You are a fraud. She shouted. Chike overheard the conversation and was equally angry. Get out of my house, Amara. You deceived me and my family. Leave now, he demanded. Amara left in shame and Chike's mother was left feeling betrayed. But she didn't want to admit her mistake. She still blamed Ulako for everything. Chike was left alone, feeling a mixture of anger and regret. He realized he had mistreated Ulako and driven her away. He missed her presence in the house, her kindness and her patience. He knew he had made a terrible mistake. After a week of regret, Chike tried to move on with his life. His mother kept feeding him and was already arranging for another girl to take Ulako's place. Meanwhile, at Ulako's parents' house, she was beginning to have a better time. She felt safer and loved by her family. But she sometimes still thought about Chike and what might have been. One day, her mother came home with news. Ulako, I talked to the pastor today. He said that Chike is under a spell. We need to intensify our prayers, she said with concern. Under a spell, Ulako asked. What do you mean, Mama? Her mother explained. The pastor revealed that your mother-in-law never wanted her son to marry you. She wanted someone she could manipulate. She tried many times to harm you, but your spirit was strong. She was happy when you lost your child and decided to turn Chike against you. Ulako was stunned. How could she do this? I never did anything to her, she said, tears forming in her eyes. The pastor urged them to be calm and continue praying. Soon, your husband will come to his senses, he said. Ulako and her mother started fasting and praying fervently. The pastor joined them and they prayed day and night for Chike's deliverance. Miracles began to happen and their faith grew stronger. One day, Chike was at his shop, lost in thought. He missed Ulako a great deal. He thought about all the things he had done to her and felt remorseful. What actually made me do these things to my wife? It wasn't her fault that she miscarried our children, Chike said to himself. He felt genuinely bad for everything he had done to Ulako and resolved to go and beg for her forgiveness. That evening, Chike went home and told his mother about his intentions. Mama, I need to go and ask Olako for forgiveness. I was wrong, he said sincerely. His mother was shocked. She just nodded her head, but her mind was racing. It's obvious Chike is no longer under my influence. I have to do something before the evil girl returns, she thought to herself. She decided to rest before taking any action, but when she woke up, it was already the next day. Chike had already left for Ulako's house early in the morning. He was determined to make things right. When he arrived, he knocked on the door, feeling nervous. Ulako's mother opened the door. Chike, what do you want? She asked. I came to see Ulako. I want to apologize. I have realized that I was wrong. Chike said sincerely. Ulako came to the door. Her heart pounding. What do you want, Chike? She asked, trying to hold back her emotions. 
I am so sorry, Ulako. I treated you terribly. I was under a spell, but now I see clearly. Please forgive me, he pleaded. Ulako looked at her mother, who nodded. It's up to you, my daughter. After much pleading from Chike and with her mother's consent, Ulako finally agreed. I will forgive you, Chike, but I need time. I will come back in the evening, she said. Chike was relieved. Thank you, Ulako. I will wait for you, he said and left for his shop, not wanting to go back home just yet. Back at Chike's house, his mother was frantically trying to get up, but she couldn't. She screamed, but Chike was not there to help her. She was trapped by her own schemes and had no one to blame but herself. Ulako packed her things, ready to return to Chike's house. She felt a mix of hope and fear, but trusted that God would protect her and that Chike had truly changed. The evening came and Ulako made her way back to the house, praying that this time things would be different. When Ulako got home, Chike wasn't back yet. She entered the house and was just putting her things away when she heard Chike's mother screaming his name. Ulako was hesitant, but she decided to check on her. As she was about to go, Chike showed up, and they both rushed into his mother's room. They found her on the floor, crying. As soon as she saw Ulako, she started pleading for forgiveness. Ulako, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I am the one behind the death of your child and the miscarriages you have had. She confessed, sobbing uncontrollably. Ulako was stunned. She couldn't believe her ears. What did you say? She asked, her voice trembling. Chike's mother continued, I never wanted you to marry my son. I did everything to make you leave, but you stayed strong. I even resorted to using dark magic to harm you and turn Chike against you. But now, I realize my mistakes. Please forgive me. Chike was in shock as well. Mama, how could you do this? You made me hurt the woman I love, he said, feeling a mixture of anger and sorrow. Ulako took a deep breath. She looked at Chike's mother, who was still on the floor pleading. She felt a surge of emotions, anger, sadness and pity. She remembered all the suffering she had endured because of this woman. But then, she also remembered the prayers, the pastor's words, and the strength she had found within herself. I don't know if I can forgive you, Mama, Ulako said softly, tears streaming down her face. You have caused me so much pain. But I also know that holding on to this anger will only hurt me more. Chike's mother continued to cry. Please, Ulako, I am truly sorry. I will do anything to make things right. Chike held Ulako's hand. Ulo, you are the strongest person I know. I am so sorry for everything. Can we start over? Can we hear from this together? He asked. His eyes filled with regret and hope. Ulaku looked into Chike's eyes. She saw the sincerity and the pain. She took another deep breath and nodded. We can try, Chike, but it will take time. Chike nodded. I understand. Thank you, Ulaku. Turning to his mother, Chike said, Mama, you need to make amends. You need to pray and seek forgiveness, not just from us, but from God. Chike's mother nodded. I will, Chike. I promise. The atmosphere in the room was heavy with emotion, but there was also a sense of relief. The truth was finally out, and it was the first step towards healing. The night Ulako and Chike sat together talking about everything that had happened, they cried, they laughed, and they started to rebuild the trust that had been broken. The next day, Chike's mother began her journey of repentance. She went to the pastor and confessed her sins. She prayed and asked for forgiveness, not only from Olako and Chike, but also from God. And as days went by, Olako slowly started to feel more at peace. She still had moments of pain and doubt, 
but with Chike's support and their renewed faith, she began to heal. Chike too changed. He became more attentive, more loving, and more committed to making their marriage work. He realized that he had almost lost the most important person in his life because of his mother's manipulation and his own weakness. Bulaku's mother continued to pray for them, offering her support and love. She was relieved to see her daughter happy again and hopeful for the future. As time went on, Bulaku and Chike faced their challenges together. They knew it wouldn't be easy, but they were determined to make it work. Their love, faith, and the lessons they had learned gave them the strength to move forward. As the days turned into weeks, and the weeks into months, the peace that settled over Ulako and Chike's home was a welcome change for the tumultuous past. Chike's mother continued a journey of repentance, and though the road was long, she steadily made amends for her actions. She even began to help Ulako around the house showing genuine remorse for her past behavior. Ulako and Chike attended counseling sessions with their pastor, seeking to rebuild their trust and strengthen their marriage. The sessions helped them communicate better and understand each other's pain and needs. They learned to express their feelings honestly and to support each other through the healing process. One bright morning, Ulako woke up feeling unwell. She recognized the symptoms and with a mixture of hope and fear, took a pregnancy test. The result was positive. Tears of joy streamed down her face as she thought of the journey ahead. She was determined to stay strong and positive, trusting that this time would be different. When she shared the news with Chike, his reaction was a blend of happiness and anxiety. He wrapped her in a gentle embrace, whispering, we will get through this together, O Lord, I promise. The month of pregnancy were not without their challenges. Ulaku faced moments of fear and doubt, but Chike stood by her, offering unwavering support. They prayed together every night, asking for strength and protection for their unborn child. Chike's mother also played a supportive role, preparing nutritious meals and taking care of Ulaku with genuine care. Her transformation was evident, and her actions spoke louder than words. She was determined to make up for the past mistakes and ensure that this pregnancy would be successful. As days passed, Chike's mother became gravely ill and deeply remorseful for her past actions towards her daughter-in-law and her son. One morning, she called them in her room and they sat beside her on her sick bed and she tearfully begged for their forgiveness one more time. Surprised, they assured her that they had already forgiven her. She advised Chike to take good care of his wife, Ulako, praising her as a good woman and prayed that God would accept her soul. Shortly after, she passed away. Chike and Ulako were deeply saddened by her death. After the burial, they slowly began to rebuild their lives and move forward. Also, the community rallied around Ulako and her family, offering prayers and encouragement. The pastor often visited, reminding them of the power of faith and love. Ulako's mother was a constant source of comfort. Her presence was a reminder of the resilience and strength that ran in their family. As Ulako's due date approached, the anticipation grew. Chike and Ulako's mother prepared everything for the arrival of the baby. They painted the nursery bought baby clothes and made sure Ulako had everything she needed for a safe and comfortable delivery. Finally, the day arrived. Ulako went into labor and Chike rushed her to the hospital. The labor was long and difficult, but Ulako remained strong. Her heart filled with hope and determination. Chike held her hand, whispering words of encouragement and love. After what felt like an eternity, the sound of a baby's cry filled the room. Tears of joy and relief flowed freely as the doctor announced the birth of healthy twins, a boy and a girl. Ulako and Chike could hardly believe it. They had been blessed with not one, but two beautiful children. As Ulako held her newborns, she felt an overwhelming sense of fulfillment. The years of pain and struggle had led to this moment of pure joy.
Chike looked at his wife and children with love and gratitude, vowing to be the best husband and father he could be. The arrival of the twins marked a new beginning for Ulako and Chike. Their home was filled with laughter and love, and their hearts with gratitude and hope. Months passed since the birth of the twins, and the joy they brought to Ulako and Chike's home was immeasurable. The twins, Ada and Ike, grew healthy and strong, filling the house with their innocent laughter and boundless energy. Ulako and Chike's bond deepened as they navigated parenthood together. Despite the harmony in their home, Ulako felt a lingering sadness. She had thought so much about her mother staying alone in their house, and she felt deeply that she wanted her mother to come and stay with them and be part of their children's life. Though her mother had been supportive from a distance, Ulako wished for a closer relationship between her mother and her new family. One day, Ulako decided to take a step forward mending this gap. She spoke to Chike about inviting her mother to live with them for a while to help with the twins and to strengthen their bond. Chike agreed, understanding the importance of family and waiting to support Ulako in every way possible. Let's bring Mama here, Chike said, holding Ulako's hand. Our children should know their grandmother and you deserve to have her close. With Chike's encouragement, Ulako called her mother. Mama, I want you to come and stay with us. She said, her voice filled with emotion. We need you here. I need you here too. Her mother, overwhelmed with emotion, agreed. I will come, my daughter. I have missed you so much. A week later, Ulako's mother arrived. The reunion was with tears of joy and warm embrace. She immediately bonded with Ada and Ike, showering them with love and attention. The twins, in turn, adored their grandmother. Their innocent laughter filling the house as she played with them. As the weeks went by, the family grew closer. Ulako's mother and Ulako with her husband bonded in friendship, supporting each other and helping around the house. They often reminisced about the past, finding healing in their shared experiences and mutual respect. One evening, as the family gathered for dinner, Chike stood up and raised his glass. To family, he said, his voice full of gratitude. We have been through so much, but we are stronger because of it. I am grateful for each and every one of you. Everyone raised their glasses, toasting to the strength and unity of their family. Ulako felt a sense of peace and fulfillment that she had never experienced before. She looked around the table at the people she loved and realized how far they had come. After dinner, the family sat in the living room, sharing stories and laughter. The twins played on the floor, their innocent joy a reminder of the miracles that had brought them together. Ulako's mother looked at her daughter and said, You have built a beautiful family, Ulo. I am so proud of you. Tears filled Ulako's eyes as she hugged her mother. I couldn't have done it without you, Mama. Thank you for everything. The days turned into weeks and the family continued to thrive. They faced challenges, as all families do, but they did so together with love and support. Ulako and Chiki's marriage grew stronger, rooted in the lessons they had learned and the trials they had overcome. One sunny afternoon, as Ulako watched the twin play in the garden, she felt a deep sense of gratitude. She had endured so much pain and hardship but it had led to this moment of peace and happiness. She knew there would be more challenges ahead, but she was ready to face them with her family by her side. Chike joined her, wrapping his arm around her shoulders. We have come a long way, Olo, he said softly. Yes, we have, she replied, leaning into him, and I am grateful for every step of the journey. As they watched their children play, they knew that the future had many more adventures, but with their love, faith, and the strength of their family, they were ready to embrace whatever came their way. And so the story of Chike and Ulako came to a close as they lived happily ever after. The most important lesson in this story is the power of forgiveness and resilience. 
Ulaku's journey through immense suffering, manipulation, and betrayal highlights the strength required to endure and overcome adversity. Despite facing relentless cruelty from her husband and mother-in-law, Ulaku's unwavering faith, inner strength, and willingness to forgive ultimately led to healing and reconciliation. The story teaches us that holding on to anger only prolongs pain, but forgiveness can pave the way for new beginnings and restored relationships. It also underscores the importance of love and support from family and faith in overcoming life's toughest challenges. And with that, my dear friends, our story comes to a close. But remember the magic of storytelling lives on, waiting to risk us away on new adventures. We are the wonders of imagination, no no bounds. Goodbye for now, and may your dreams be filled with joy, wonder, and endless possibility. Thank you so much for watching. Please kindly comment, like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting stories.